you're a big brother. You're going to be a big brother. Hooray, how lucky are you? Babies love their big brothers and the clever things they do. Babies are funny and friendly, but there are things a big brother soon knows. Babies can smell and pull hair as well, so watch out and hold on to your nose. Babies make mum and dads busy. They won't just be caring for you, but now that you're a big brother, it's fun sharing with somebody new. Babies don't do much to start with, so just quietly show them your toys. They can't dance or sing, but they like to join in by making a gurgling noise. Babies learn lot from, lots from big brothers, so teach them all that you can do. Share and take care, be baby's best friend, and they'll be amazing, like you. Cinderella Once upon a time, there was a young girl who lived with her father, stepmother, and two stepsisters. The stepmother was unkind, and the stepsisters were mean. They made the girl do all the housework, eat scraps and sleep by the fireplace among the cinders and ashes. Because she was always covered with cinders, they named her Cinderella. One morning, a special invitation arrived. All the young women in the kingdom were invited to a royal ball, a boy for the ball for the prince to choose a bride. Cinderella longed to go, but her stepsisters just laughed. You go to a ball in those rags? How ridiculous, they cackled. Instead, Cinderella had to rush around helping her stepsisters get ready for the ball. As they left for the palace, Cinderella sat beside the fireplace and wept. I wish I could go to the ball, she cried. Suddenly, a sparkle of light filled the dull kitchen, and there was a fairy. Don't be afraid, my dear, she said. I am your fairy godmother, and you shall go to the ball. But how? said Cinderella. Find me a big pumpkin, four white mice, and a rat, replied the fairy godmother. Cinderella found everything as quickly as she could. The fairy godmother waved her wand, and the pumpkin changed into a magnificent golden coach, and the white mace became four white horses, and the rat became a coachman. With one last gentle tap of her wand, the fairy godmother changed Cinderella's dusty dress into a shimmering ball gown. On her feet were two sparkling glass slippers. Now off you go, said the fairy godmother. But remember, all this will vanish at midnight, so make sure you are home by then. Cinderella climbed into the coach and whisked her away to the palace. Everyone was enchanted by the lovely stranger, especially the prince, who danced with her all evening. As Cinderella whirled around the room in his arms, she felt so happy that she completely forgot her fairy godmother's warning. Suddenly, she heard the clock strike midnight. Bong, bong, bong. Cinderella picked up her skirt and fled from the ballroom. The worried prince ran after her. Bong, bong, bong. She ran down the palace steps, losing a glass slipper on the way but she didn't dare stop. Bong, bong, bong. Cinderella jumped into the coach and it drove off before he could stop her. Bong, bong, bong. On the final stroke of midnight, Cinderella found herself sitting on the road beside a pumpkin, four white mice and a black rat. She was dressed, she was dressed in rags and had only a single glass slipper left from her magical evening. At the palace, the prince saw something twinkling on the steps, a single glass slipper. I will marry the woman whose foot fits this glass slipper, he declared. The next day, the prince took the glass slipper and visited every house in the kingdom. At last, the prince came to Cinderella's house. Her stepsisters tried and tried to squeeze their huge feet into the delicate slipper, but no matter what they did, they could not get the slipper to fit. Cinderella watched as she scrubbed the floor. May I try, please? she asked. You didn't even go to the ball, laughed the eldest stepsister. Everyone may try, said the prince, as he held out the sparkling slipper, and suddenly gasped the stepsisters as Cinderella's dainty foot slipped easily into it. 
The prince joyfully took Cinderella in his arms. Will you marry me? he asked. I will, Cinderella said. Much to the disgust of her stepmother and stepsisters, soon Cinderella and the prince were married. They lived long, happy lives together, and Cinderella's stepmother and daughters had to do their own cleaning and never went to a royal ball again. Jack and Ori. I'll tell you a story of Jack and Ori, and now my story's begun. I'll tell you another of Jack and his brother, and now my story's done. Three Wise Men of Gotham Three wise men of Gotham went to a sea in a bowl, bowl, and if the bowl had been stronger, my song would have been longer. Little Tommy Tittlemouse Little Tommy Tittlemouse lived in a little house. He caught fishes in other men's ditches. Aiken Drum There was a man who lived on the moon, lived on the moon, lived on the moon. There was a man who lived on the moon, and his name was Aiken Drum. Harry Parry Oh, rare Harry Parry, when will you marry? When apples and pears are ripe, I'll come to your wedding, without any bidding, and dance and sing all night. Lucy Locket Lucy Locket lost her pocket. Kitty Fisher found it. Not a penny was there in it. Only, rib only a ribbon round it. P is for princesses. Princess Ava didn't like pink which was a problem, because every single thing that anybody had ever given her was pink. She, her bedroom was pink, her clothes were pink, even her hairbrush was pink. And one day she decided that enough was enough. No more pink, said Princess Ava in her firmest voice. Don't be silly, said her father, the king. Pink is the best colour for a princess. But I want to wear red and green and blue and purple. Princess Ava pleaded. The king shook his head. I won't allow it, he said stubbornly. But Princess Ava was even more stubborn than her father. She put on her pink cloak, pulled her pink hood up so no one could recognise her, and marched off to the market. There were lots of stalls selling clothes and shoes and blankets and trinkets and balls of string in every colour that she could imagine. Princess Ava bought sky blue and grass green gowns. She picked out white and blue shoes. She chose golden blankets and deep blue curtains. Who is that girl? whispered the market sellers. Back at the palace, Princess Ava collected up everything pink to be given away and filled her room with every other colour of the rainbow. When the king saw Princess Ava's room, his eyes nearly popped out of his heads. But then he looked at his daughter's big smile, and he smiled too. You were right, he said. I'm sorry. These bright colours are perfect for you, and I love to see you looking happy. And from that day on, no one gave Princess Ava anything pink ever again. The Ant and the Dove One morning, a thirsty ant went down to the river for a drink. Suddenly, swoosh! A ripple swept the tiny ant off the riverbank and into the water. Help! cried the ant. A kind dove heard the ant's cries. She swooped down and dropped a leaf into the water near him. Climb onto this, she cooed. Oh, thank you, gasped the ant. You saved my life, and he floated back to the shore on the leaf. A little later, the ant was drying off in the sun when he saw a hunter trying to catch the dove with a net. The ant went to help his new friend, so he scurried over to the hunter and bit his foot. Out, yelled the hunter. Startled by the noise, the dove flew away. <coughs> thank you she called out to the ant. Now you've saved my life too. And the moral of the story is, one good turn deserves another. The Fox and Grapes One hot summer's day, a fox was walking through a field when he saw a bunch of grapes dangling high above his head. I'm so thirsty, said Fox to himself. I wish I could have those juicy grapes. Standing on his back legs, the fox stretched his, neck, stretched his neck up as far as he could, but the grapes were too high for him to reach. Then he took several steps backward, ran toward the grapevine, with, took a giant leap and missed. Determined to get the delicious grapes, the fox ran and jumped over and over again. Now he was even hotter and thirstier than before, and he still hadn't managed to reach a single grape. Fed up. The fox stopped jumping. Then he stuck his pointy nose high in the air and trotted away. 
What's all the fuss about grapes, anyway? He sniffed. I much prefer strawberries. And the moral of the story is, if someone can't get something, they pretend it is not worth having. <laughs>